Satyabama Institute of Science and Technology. Hello everyone. I am hereby to deliver a presentation about Introduction to Blockchain. This is Asha Judy, working as an assistant professor in the Department of Computer Science and Engineering at Satyabama Institute of Science and Technology. So when we think about the blockchain, it is a secret behind some subjects called computer networks, cryptography and distributed database systems. So the formula behind this blockchain is computer networks plus cryptography and distributed system which gives the technology, new technology called blockchain. So let us see how the transaction takes place in blockchain. So first of all, a transaction has been requested between two parties. So that is what someone requesting a transaction here. And this transaction, made transaction must be shared to all the nodes in the network. So this blockchain works as a peer-to-peer -peer network. This transaction must be shared with all other nodes in the blockchain network. So the requested transaction is broadcast to P2P. So these are the nodes in the blockchain network. So all the nodes will be having the transaction details. So once the transaction has done, it is being validated by the miners. So miner is nothing but the node which is doing the validation process. So once the transaction is validated, it must be stored in the block. So the transaction has been happened and the miners is a validators who will, who will be receiving the cryptocurrency as a reward. So this cryptocurrency is nothing but it doesn't have any intrinsic value. It doesn't have any physical form. This cryptocurrency must be circulated in the blockchain network. So it is a digital currency. And all the data which is validated by the miners will get stored in the blocks. So the new blocks will be get formed and then the new block will get added in the existing blocks. So this chain will form a blockchain. That is what the transaction getting complete. After the validated transaction, the transaction must get stored in the blocks. So what is this block? It is nothing but just like a structure of linked list. What is linked list? Linked list will be having the reference each and every node will be having the reference of the previous nodes. The same way the blockchain will be having the structure of a linked list. See here the nodes or the blocks will be linked cryptographically which means the hash of the previous block will be linked to the previous block header. So the each and every blocks will be interlinked cryptographically. All the data stored in this block will be crypto cryptographically secured. So the elements in the block will be header and body. There are two parts in a block, header part and body part. In header, there will be some elements which is hash of the previous block, timestamp, nonce and the Merkle tree. And then the body part contains the transaction data. So see here the elements. The header node, header element will be the identity of the each block. So there will be ID, header ID, which will be used to identify each blocks. And then previous hash value. So each and every block will be having the previous block hash value. So the data will be encrypted and stored as a hash. The previous block hash will be stored in the current block. And timestamp. Timestamp is the moment or the time when the block is getting validated. And then nonce. Nonce is nothing but a number used only once, which is a random number generated used to calculate the hash value. And the last one is Merkle root. Merkle root, it is nothing but a data structure which is used to store all the hash values. See the structure of Merkle tree. So the transaction each and every transaction here example transaction A, transaction B, C and D. Each and every transaction is encrypted and the hash value of this transaction must be stored here and all these hash values will get combined here HA and HB is combined so it is stored as HAB 
and here C and D transaction hash value is combined and stored in HCD. So, all this together A, B and C, D will get together and in the root node of the Merkle tree all the transaction or the hash value of the trans all transactions will get stored. So, that is nothing but Merkle root. So, Merkle root is the root node of the Merkle tree which stores all the hash values. And here distributed ledger, so this will play, blockchain will play a major role like uh, distributed ledger technology. Here why it is, so we are comparing the centralized ledger with the distributed ledger. In centralized ledger, there will be a center authority, for example, and financial institution like a bank, bank which holds all the client details. So without the appro approval of bank, the client cannot transfer money. But in blockchain, all the nodes will be play a client role, client and server role. So each and every node will be having the responsibility as a client and a server. So when the node D is requested data, the nearby nodes can share the data with the node D. So there will not be any central authority. So that is what it is a distributed ledger. And when we compare the normal database with the blockchain, there is a difference. There will not be any intermediaries. That is what there is no central authority. Without any intermediaries, the blockchain, in blockchain network, we can transfer the money. So, but in traditional transfer, as per the RBA guidelines, the bank has to obey all the guidelines which is uh, given by the RBA and with the appro approval of this financial institution like bank, only we can transfer the money from one person to another person. That is what database uses centralized storage of data, blockchain uses decentralized storage of data. And here there will be an admin to manage all the database and in blockchain there will not be any administrator to manage. And why it is using cryptography? Because of security, we need to store the data securely. So that is why we are having this cryptography concept. Cryptography is nothing but the study about the encryption and decryption. So in the stage of initiating uh, a tra request, requesting a transaction or broadcasting a transaction, we are using digital signatures and also we are having the keys called private and public keys. And validation of transaction, this validation must be taken place through the consensus mechanism. There are different types of consensus mechanism that is nothing but uh, agreement of or mutual agreement of the validation of nodes. So, proof of work, proof of stake, these are the examples of consensus mechanism and chaining blocks. So, due to this hash function only we are linking the blocks together, that is what hash function. And the types of blockchain which is uh, normally, generally the, there are four different types of blockchain. The first one is public blockchain, public blockchain it is a type of blockchain where the permission less role played. So there are two different categories permission less and permission blockchain. So this public blockchain fall under the permission less criteria. So any nodes in the blockchain network can get into this blockchain. That is example for this public blockchain is Bitcoin and Ethereum. And the next one is private blockchain. Private blockchain falls under the category called permissioned or we can call it as managed blockchain. So there will be a central authority to control all the nodes. So with the permission of this authority only the nodes can enter into the private blockchain. The example for private blockchain is Ripple and Hyperledger. The next one is consortium blockchain. Consortium is nothing but the group of organizations. When the number of n number of companies or organizations coming together and they are forming a blockchain network means that, is, that will come under this consortium. So this is also a kind of permissioned blockchain. And the next one is hybrid blockchain which is a combination of private and public blockchain. So this will be having the features of both permissioned and permissionless. So this is a pictorial diagram of the types of blockchain. So here it is the permissionless and here it is the permission that is the major category. So public blockchain there will be no central authority. Private blockchain it is controlled by one authority. For example, if a company enforces having their own 
blockchain means the employee of the Infosys can only enter into that blockchain network. Right. The hybrid, it is the combination of both public and private. So, controlled by one authority and it will be having some permission less features also. And consortium which is a group of organizations blockchain. So, mining, mining is nothing but a validation process. All the data which we are storing in the block will be validated by a vali uh, mining node. That is called mining and the miner nodes will be receiving the uh, reward as cryptocurrencies either it is ether or uh, bitcoin. So, the types of mining, individual mining, pool mining and cloud mining. Individual is nothing but a single person doing the mining process and pool mining which is a team of people will be doing together the mining and then the cloud mining without any physical equipments there will be a mining rig to mine all the blocks. So, without any physical hardware and software components we can able to do the mining from the cloud. So, cloud will be providing all the things which we want to mine, right. With cloud mining, we can eliminate the need for computer hardware and software. So, the use cases of blockchain is we can uh, do the transaction in the form of cryptocurrencies and supply chain management where we can verify and track the goods details and healthcare, we can preserve the patient's health records and decentralized finance, the financial things can be happened in decentralized manner in blockchain that is nothing but DeFi and smart contracts which is a self-executing contracts which we can do all the agreements digitally. Challenges and limitations scalability when the n number of nodes is increasing there will be a low of transaction speed and the throughput. And Energy consumption, of course, when we are doing mining, there will be a lot of power consumptions happening and then regulatory consensus which will navigate the legal and regulatory frameworks. So, these are the key challenges that is security issues, low scalability, low interoperability, high energy consumption and manpower also, workforce also. Thank you.